Thousands of people fall each year, resulting in harm, distress, and in some cases, death. While most falls happen in the community, some occur while people are in hospital receiving treatment for other things. Many of these falls are preventable. Hospital staff are working hard to reduce the number of falls that happen in hospital and the harm that occurs as a result. The last thing they want is for a patient to fall. When a patient falls, it just breaks your heart. You get a real sick feeling in your stomach. And the nurses always feel like they perhaps have failed. It's very upsetting when our patients become harmed from falling. The focus should be to look at how we can reduce injuries from the falls in the hospitals. So it is a major issue in the hospitals, no doubt. Mum's experience was really unfortunate and um, it was just so disappointing that something so simple uh, was neglected and resulted in um, two weeks of mum in hospital. I hope that the hospital staff will learn and changes are put in place to make this not happen again. I think falls in hospital are, are a significant issue. Um, we take people out of their normal environment, put them into a strange environment. We're giving them medications and different things that uh, could increase their risk of falls. And we bring them into a hospital with many objects all over the place. We've got blood pressure machines, we've got x-ray machines, we've got all sorts of things. Unfamiliar objects but in unusual places. We must do everything we can to avoid a patient falling and when a patient falls, avoid harm. The last thing we want providing care to patients in a hospital is for them to be harmed while they're here. We have a duty of care to keep patients safe, but unfortunately we don't always achieve it. And falls is one of the most common ways that patients are hurt, particularly elderly patients when they're in hospital care. To keep one person in a rest home or a private hospital costs about $30,000 a year. So it is a huge amount of money. Well, the cost of the patient is even more. Some patients never even get home after they've had a fall with harm. And even if there's been no harm caused, there is often a loss of confidence. Or a worsening of fear. We call it sort of kinesiophobia or fear of movement. So that's very significant. And it can really become a socially isolating factor. They don't feel like they're comfortable going out, uneven ground, you know, if they consider a lot of things and become quite socially isolated. Research evidence shows that um, after a major hip fracture, about 25% of the patients you know, will die within the first year after the hip fracture. Well, Mum is 93 and she had a fall, which she does have occasionally. Um, and as a result of the fall, she reluctantly went into hospital. She was ready to come home after five or six days, I think it was, and um, I had the call to say that she was dressed, ready to go, she'd been discharged, and then within 20 minutes, um, as I was ready to go and pick her up, I had a call from the hospital to say that unfortunately that Mum had had a fall. Um, and she wouldn't now be in a position to come home. So when I got up there, I learnt that um, she'd actually fallen in the bathroom within her hospital room. What had happened was that there was a number of um, items, well, I think it was two or three items of um, equipment, hospital equipment on the floor. I think. It was so cluttered in there that she, when she came to leave the bathroom, she couldn't get out without reversing first, so she had to push the toilet seat that was sitting on the floor, which was the main obstacle with her foot, and in doing so, she lost her balance, fell back and smacked her head on the back of the wall. Learning from the patients and their stories is a huge uh, motivating factor for us. You see the real toll that that took on that family. It makes us feel as though we've let the patients down. It's a very simple thing to keep a place tidy. Okay, let's have a really close look at what happened and why it happened and we'll try very hard in the future not to let it happen again. But there's so many people involved in a, in a ward team that somebody has to take responsibility. So what we've done is made falls everybody's business. Mum going into hospital as a result of a fall should have um, put up the warning signs and that staff should have been taking extra care to make sure that where she was, particularly when she was mobile using bathrooms, was a safe environment. 
Um, in this region, we became aware that we've been all working on falls in different ways and trying to reduce harm from falls. And we're seeing some pockets of excellence. However, getting that widespread change across the region wasn't happening. So we have joined forces and have begun to work together and starting to share and learn from each other about how we can do this and how we can spread those areas of excellence in a wider sense. We don't really want to have duplication. Uh, we just need to have uh, one system, one risk assessment tool to make sure that all the DHBs are following that and making sure we have a consistent approach. Well here at County's Manukau Health we have a number of patient safety initiatives and uh, preventing harm from falls is, is one of those. It sits within a bigger group we call aiming for zero patient harm. Within that we have a multidisciplinary team which I lead which consists of all of the health professionals which have a role in preventing harm from falls. We now have a standardised way of measuring um, falls and injuries from farms, falls across the region. So we know where we are and we know where we want to go. Being able to see everybody's data and having that visible, it, it makes us realise that it's, it's um, not a problem that's unique to any one area or any one DHB. Um, and as long as we're not competitive, we can use that data to share in each other's successes and to also learn from each, each other. It's a collaborative approach that I think is vital in making this work. Some of our priorities going forward is to um, focus more on the residential aged care facilities. We've got good engagement from the DHBs and we have a growing engagement with the aged residential care sector. We're looking to have 75 or 80% of the aged residential care facilities in this region working on improving um, falls and harm from falls. Most falls occur around the patient's bed, in the patient's room or in the toilet or heading to the toilet. So it makes us think about what are the things that could help prevent falls in those areas. This ward's been involved in releasing time to care, which is uh, a lean healthcare program that really gave us the opportunity and structure to review our work processes and environment to increase patient safety. So the things that we've done is around the environment, we looked at the patient room, we decluttered equipment and furniture in the room, we've designed and designated bedside, so we've now got a patient and visitor side and a nurse's side. So that removes hazards when they're mobilising and also equally allows the nurse easy access to emergency equipment and clinical devices. And out of that we've also developed a patient status board. We assess falls risk on admission and during their stay, but the patient status board is a real good visual tool to show and inform the family and patient of who their nurse is what their falls risk is and what assistance and mobility they need. We've implemented um, ISOBAR bedside handover where the patient meets their nurse and team at the beginning of each shift. They can ask questions about their care and also we can complete essential safety checks. It's a really good visual assessment and with the verbal handover we can quickly identify the patients at risk. We have daily rapid rounds so we are liaising with our physiotherapists, our occupational therapists uh, speech language therapists and social workers, so it's a real team approach. But I guess nursing start the ball rolling because they have the first contact often with the patient when they come into the ward. It is the responsibility of all the people who are looking after, you know, that older person who comes into the hospital is to do a false risk assessment at the time of admission when they come into the hospital. Well, once we've identified the most common reasons or the, the, what they're at most risk of for falling, we'll tailor an interventions package to, to address that. So commonly it may be balance related issues, or reduction in the ability to save oneself if you should, should stumble or trip. And, and we would do an exercise program around balance exercises or strengthening exercises or enhancing someone's ability to catch themselves or save themselves should they stumble. Uh, if it was risks related to footwear or glasses or the condition of their feet, we would refer on as it was appropriate to the most appropriate medical professional. You know, as a medical doctor, cardiovascular assessment, neurological assessment, osteoporosis assessment. Another important factor would be the medications, the benzodiazepines or the sleeping tablets or the psychotropic medications which we use. Um, all these medications uh, can uh, result in falls because of their side effects and they also have an effect on the bone density as well so they actually cause thinning of the bones. Nurses are part of a wider team of people caring for patients 
But the uniqueness about nurses are that they're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They get to know their patients really well and they understand and um, think about their patient's uniqueness. What is it they have to do for that patient to keep them safe? And we certainly are holding on to the small victories as they happen and hopefully all those small victories will add up to an overall win in the end. Intentional rounding is a process that has been implemented in here in this organisation. What intentional rounding does is encourages the nurses to meet with the patient on a regular basis throughout their shift using intent. They meet the patient at the beginning of shift and um, at the patient bedside handover and makes a contract with the patient so that they will be visiting the patient on an hourly basis. We're quite excited about that because it's going to give more structure to our nursing care, you know, seeing the patients routinely on an hourly basis and preempting their sort of comfort and safety needs. It does make you check on your patient regularly. It does make you address the things that are that patient particularly needs. Now if they don't need to go help to go to the toilet, you don't ask them but you ask them other things that's relevant to them, about their pain or about them. You also use the status bed boards to highlight some of the key areas of concern for a patient in that day. It's intended to be individualised to the patient. The patient then has trust that you'll be back at a certain time to help them with the needs that they require. And I think there is good evidence that intentional rounding reduces the amount of falls in the hospital. And we know that our core bell usage has reduced by 50% and we know that we have had a reduction in falls. Our data is new so we can't see any trends just yet but we know that we have had these reductions. Reducing harm from falls is a journey and we're well into that journey and we're using measurement and we're using each other and we're learning from each other but we still have a ways to go. I hold the, the safety of our patients as the paramount of what I do. It is, it is why we are nurses and it is something that from our board right through to our nurses on the floor we're taking extremely seriously. There's, there's no magic bullet for falls, there's not, not one health professional that holds the key. It's about the um, person who brings the cup of tea to the patient and if they see the patient getting out of bed and they know that that patient is, um, is frail or just looks like they might easily fall, that they push the bell and get some help. Through to the patient themselves who recognises their own limitations and uh, communicates that to staff. Uh, through to the patient's family who, who play a role in that as well. Through to the obvious staff members who have that duty of care and that obligation to, to do their best to ensure patients aren't harmed when they're in our care.